I think this is very frightening for people. Uh, there are those who remember the old days of the Cold War and Russia and America, and those that feel like we're just sort of moving to a frightening period of big powers squaring up to each other. But is it as tense as it appears? I think it's certainly tense. I mean, it, it's funny, because when I started my military training, we learned about all the capabilities of mm. Russian weapon systems and thought, well, this is a bit old-fashioned because the Cold War's finished. And yet, mm. 20 years later, we're in a similar situation. Um, the presence of, of maritime patrolling in the North Atlantic, as you said in your piece there, is at the highest level, higher than some levels seen in the Cold War. Yeah, and obviously what's trooping around the North Atlantic is a big battleship that's ready to sink, isn't it? I mean, you don't pick a fight with anyone unless you have a chance of winning it, do you? Well, I think that's... That's key. The thing about the Russian military is you hope not to get into a fight with them because they are a very different prospect to anything that the British Army or the Americans, for that matter, have Why taken on. Why is that? Because they have the scale that because we don't. Because they have the scale, they have the kit, um, they, they have invested heavily, now you would say, in certain mm. sort of very high-tech, very expensive stuff. Um, you would say that we would still retain the edge. But actually, the one part that the Russians haven't neglected of their infrastructure, and they've neglected a lot over the last few years, is their military. So they still have very sophisticated tanks, they have very sophisticated ground weapon systems, and they're not afraid, as we've seen in the Ukraine, uh, as we're seeing in Syria, to use them. And so if you think about the deployment of the NATO enhanced forward presence in Estonia, where we've now got 150 troops from five rifles there, they're going to be joined by a battle group presence, 300 vehicles, Challenger 2, a warrior armed fighting vehicle. Yeah, That's a big know, step forward. We could go on about that, but how much of this is about war or how much is it about trade? Because Russia is not part of the G7, they'd like to get back into that, I assume they'd like to get back into that. And is this not just, you know, turning the screw to say, come on, be good boys, we'll be good to you, you know, it'll all work out in everyone's favour in the end? I, I think trade's obviously linked to everything, but I think it's linked to President Putin's kind of vision of what Russia should be. I, I think he kind of draws a lot of public support from projecting a strong Russia. I, and many would say if it was purely linked to sort of trade and spending power, then, then there would be better, more effective ways for Russia to spend some of its limited resources. There's certainly a lot of posturing going on. But you know, if I was a young officer now and I was about to deploy to Estonia or the RAF who are going to Romania in the summer, um, you'd certainly be thinking, wow, this mm. is a bit different from what I was expecting.